High Temperature Superconductivity, Wikipedia Audio High temperature superconductors are materials that behave as superconductors at unusually high temperatures. The first high TC superconductor was discovered in 1986 by IBM researchers George Bednors and K. Alex Muller, who were awarded the 1987 Nobel Prize in Physics for their important breakthrough in the discovery of superconductivity in ceramic materials. Whereas ordinary or metallic superconductors usually have transition temperatures below 30 K, and must be cooled using liquid helium in order to achieve superconductivity, HTS have been observed with transition temperatures as high as 138 K, and can be cooled to superconductivity using liquid nitrogen. Until 2008 only certain compounds of copper and oxygen were believed to have HTS properties, and the term high-temperature superconductor was used interchangeably with cuprate superconductor for compounds such as bismuth strontium calcium copper oxide and yttrium barium copper oxide. Several iron-based compounds are now known to be superconducting at high temperatures. In 2015, Hydrogen sulfide under extremely high pressure was found to undergo superconducting transition near 203 K, the highest temperature superconductor known to date. History For an explanation about TC, see superconductivity superconducting phase transition and the second bullet item of BCS theory successes of the BCS theory. The phenomenon of superconductivity was discovered by Kimmerling Ons in 1911, in metallic mercury below 4K ever since, researchers have attempted to observe superconductivity at increasing temperatures with the goal of finding a room temperature superconductor. In the late 1970s, superconductivity was observed in certain metal oxides at temperatures as high as 13K which were much higher than those for elemental metals. In 1986, J. George Bednors and K. Alex Muller, working at the IBM Research Lab near Zurich, Switzerland were exploring a new class of ceramics for superconductivity. Bednors encountered a barium-doped compound of lanthanum and copper oxide whose resistance dropped to zero at a temperature around 35 K. Their results were soon confirmed by many groups, notably Paul Chu at the University of Houston and Shoji Tanaka at the University of Tokyo. Presence of a pseudo-gap phase up to at least optimal doping, different trends in the Uemura plot relating transition temperature to the superfluid density. The inverse square of the London penetration depth appears to be proportional to the critical temperature for a large number of underdoped cuprate superconductors, but the constant of proportionality is different for whole and electron doped cuprates. The linear trend implies that the physics of these materials is strongly two dimensional. Universal hourglass shaped feature in the spin excitations of cuprates measured using inelastic neutron diffraction, Nernst effect evident in both the superconducting and pseudo gap phases. Shortly after, P. W. Anderson, at Princeton University, came up with the first theoretical description of these materials, using the resonating valence bond theory but a full understanding of these materials is still developing today. These superconductors are now known to possess a D-wave pair symmetry. The first proposal that high-temperature cuprate superconductivity involves D-wave pairing was made in 1987 by Bickers, Scalapino and Scalatar, followed by three subsequent theories in 1988 by Inui, Doniak, Hirschfeld and Ruckenstein using spin fluctuation theory, and by Gro, Poil Blanc, Rice and Zhang, and by Coatlier and Liu identifying D-wave pairing as a natural consequence of the RVB theory. 
The confirmation of the D-wave nature of the cuprate superconductors was made by a variety of experiments, including the direct observation of the D-wave nodes in the excitation spectrum through angle-resolved photoemission spectroscopy, the observation of a half-integer flux in tunneling experiments, and indirectly from the temperature dependence of the penetration depth, specific heat, and thermal conductivity. Until 2015 the superconductor with the highest transition temperature that had been confirmed by multiple independent research groups was mercury barium calcium copper oxide at around 133 K. After more than 20 years of intensive research, the origin of high temperature superconductivity is still not clear, but it seems that instead of electron phonon attraction mechanisms, as in conventional superconductivity, one is dealing with genuine electronic mechanisms, and instead of conventional, purely S-wave pairing, more exotic pairing symmetries are thought to be involved. In 2014, evidence showing that fractional particles can happen in quasi-two-dimensional magnetic materials, was found by EPFL scientists lending support for Anderson's theory of high-temperature superconductivity. The structure of high TC copper oxide or cuprate superconductors are often closely related to perovskite structure, and the structure of these compounds has been described as a distorted, oxygen-deficient multilayered perovskite structure. One of the properties of the crystal structure of oxide superconductors is an alternating multi-layer of CuO2 planes with superconductivity taking place between these layers. The more layers of CuO2, the higher Tc. This structure causes a large anisotropy in normal conducting and superconducting properties, since electrical currents are carried by holes induced in the oxygen sites of the CuO2 sheets. The electrical conduction is highly anisotropic, with a much higher conductivity parallel to the CuO2 plane than in the perpendicular direction. Generally, critical temperatures depend on the chemical compositions, cations substitutions, and oxygen content. They can be classified as superstripes, i.e., particular realizations of super lattices at atomic limit made of superconducting atomic layers, wires, dots separated by spacer layers, that gives multi-band and multi-gap superconductivity. The first superconductor found with TC77K is yttrium barium copper oxide. The proportions of the three different metals in the YBA2CU3O7 superconductor are in the mole ratio of 1 to 2 to 3 for yttrium to barium to copper, respectively. Thus, this particular superconductor is often referred to as the 123 superconductor. LNFE as or Lnfizo 1X with TC up to 56K referred to as 1,111 materials. A fluoride variant of these materials was subsequently found with similar TC values, Fe2S2 and related materials with pairs of iron arsenide layers, referred to as 122 compounds. TC values range up to 38K. These materials also superconduct when iron is replaced with cobalt, LeFE as and NaFE as with TC up to around 20K. These materials superconduct close to stoichiometric composition and are referred to as 111 compounds, FESE with small off stoichiometry or tellurium doping. The unit cell of YBA2CU307 consists of three pseudocubic elementary perovskite unit cells. Each perovskite unit cell contains a Y or BA atom at the center, BA in the bottom unit cell, Y in the middle one, and BA in the top unit cell. Thus, Y and BA are stacked in the sequence along the C-axis. All corner sites of the unit cell are occupied by CU, 
which has two different coordinations, Cu and Cu, with respect to oxygen. There are four possible crystallographic sites for oxygen, O, O, O and O. The coordination polyhedra of Y and Ba with respect to oxygen are different. The tripling of the perovskite unit cell leads to nine oxygen atoms, whereas YBA2CU307 has seven oxygen atoms and, therefore, is referred to as an oxygen-deficient perovskite structure. The structure has a stacking of different layers. One of the key feature of the unit cell of YBA2CU307X is the presence of two layers of CuO2. The role of the Y-plane is to serve as a spacer between two CuO2 planes. In YBCO, the CuO chains are known to play an important role for superconductivity. Tc is maximal near 92 K when x 0.15 and the structure is orthorhombic. Superconductivity disappears at x 0.6 where the structural transformation of YBCO occurs from orthorhombic to tetragonal. The crystal structure of Bi, TL, and HG-based high TC superconductors are very similar. Like YBCO, the perovskite type feature and the presence of CuO2 layers also exist in these superconductors. However, unlike YBCO, CuO chains are not present in these superconductors. The YBCO superconductor has an orthorhombic structure, whereas the other high TC superconductors have a tetragonal structure. Crystal structures of high temperature ceramic superconductors. The Bi Senior CaCuO system has three superconducting phases forming a homologous series as Bi2, state root 2 can one cuno 4 plus 2N and X. These three phases are Bi2201, Bi2212 and Bi2223, having transition temperatures of 20, 85 and 110 K, respectively where the numbering system represent number of atoms for Bi, Senior, Ca, and Cu respectively. The two phases have a tetragonal structure which consists of two sheared crystallographic unit cells. The unit cell of these phases has double Bi O planes which are stacked in a way that the Bi atom of one plane sits below the oxygen atom of the next consecutive plane. The Ca atom forms a layer within the interior of the CuO2 layers in both Bi2212 and Bi2223, there is no Ca layer in the Bi2201 phase. The three phases differ with each other in the number of CuO2 planes, Bi2201, Bi2212 and Bi2223 phases have 1, 2 and 3 CuO2 planes respectively. The C-axis lattice constants of these phases increases with the number of CuO2 planes. The coordination of the Cu atom is different in the three phases. The Cu atom forms an octahedral coordination with respect to oxygen atoms in the 2201 phase, whereas in 2212, the Cu atom is surrounded by five oxygen atoms in a pyramidal arrangement. In the 2223 structure, Cu has two coordinations with respect to oxygen, one Cu atom is bonded with four oxygen atoms in square planar configuration and another Cu atom is coordinated with five oxygen atoms in a pyramidal arrangement. TLBACACUO superconductor, the first series of the TL-based superconductor containing one TLO layer has the general formula TLBA2CAN-1CUNO2N plus 3, whereas the second series containing two TLO layers has a formula of TL2BA2CAN-1CUNO2N plus 4 with N equals 1, 2, and 3. In the structure of TL2BA2CuO6, there is one CuO2 layer with the stacking sequence. 
NTL2BA2CACU208, there are two CUO layers with a CA layer in between. Similar to the TL2BA2CU06 structure, TLO layers are present outside the BAO layers. In TL2BA2CA2CU3010, there are three CUO2 layers enclosing CA layers between each of these. In TL-based superconductors, TC is found to increase with the increase in CUO2 layers. However, the value of TC decreases after four CUO2 layers in TLBA2CA and minus one CUNO2 N plus three, and in the TL2BA2CA and minus one CUNO2 N plus four compound, it decreases after three CUO2 layers. HGBACACUO superconductor, the crystal structure of HGBA2CUO4, HGBA2CACU206 and HGBA2CA2CU308 is similar to that of TL1201, TL1212 and TL1223, with HG in place of TL. It is noteworthy that the TC of the HG compound containing one CuO2 layer is much larger as compared to the one QO2 layer compound of thallium. In the HG-based superconductor, TC is also found to increase as the CuO2 layer increases. For HG1201, HG1212 and HG1223, the values of TC are 94, 128 and the record value at ambient pressure 134 K, respectively, as shown in table below. The observation that the TC of HG1223 increases to 153 K under high pressure indicates that the TC of this compound is very sensitive to the structure of the compound. The simplest method for preparing high TC superconductors is a solid state thermochemical reaction involving mixing, calcination, and sintering. The appropriate amounts of precursor powders, usually oxides and carbonates, are mixed thoroughly using a ball mill. Solution chemistry processes such as co precipitation, Freeze drying and sol gel methods are alternative ways for preparing a homogeneous mixture. These powders are calcined in the temperature range from 800 degrees Celsius to 950 degrees Celsius for several hours. The powders are cooled, reground and calcined again. This process is repeated several times to get homogeneous material. The powders are subsequently compacted to pellets and sintered. The sintering environments such as temperature, annealing time, atmosphere, and cooling rate play a very important role in getting good high TC superconducting materials. The YBA2CU307X compound is prepared by calcination and sintering of a homogeneous mixture of Y2O3, BACO3, and CUO in the appropriate atomic ratio. Calcination is done at 950 degrees C, whereas sintering is done at 950 degrees Celsius in an oxygen atmosphere. The oxygen stoichiometry in this material is very crucial for obtaining a superconducting YBA2CU307X compound. At the time of sintering, the semiconducting tetragonal YBA2CU306 compound is formed, which, on slow cooling in oxygen atmosphere, turns into superconducting YBA2CU307X. The uptake and loss of oxygen are reversible in YBA2CU307X. A fully oxygenated orthorhombic YBA2CU307X sample can be transformed into tetragonal YBA2CU306 by heating in a vacuum at temperature above 700 degrees Celsius. The preparation of Bi, TL, and HG-based high TC superconductors is difficult compared to YBCO. 
Problems in these superconductors arise because of the existence of three or more phases having a similar layered structure. Thus, syntactic intergrowth and defects such as stacking faults occur during synthesis and it becomes difficult to isolate a single superconducting phase. For bi senior CACUO, it is relatively simple to prepare the bi 2212 phase whereas it is very difficult to prepare a single phase of BI-2223. The BI-2212 phase appears only after few hours of sintering at 868-70 degrees C, but the larger fraction of the BI-2223 phase is formed after a long reaction time of more than a week at 870 degrees Celsius. Although the substitution of PB in the bi senior CACUO compound has been found to promote the growth of the high TC phase, a long sintering time is still required. High temperature has two common definitions in the context of superconductivity. The label high TC may be reserved by some authors for materials with critical temperature greater than the boiling point of liquid nitrogen. However, a number of materials including the original discovery and recently discovered nictide superconductors had critical temperatures below 77K but are commonly referred to in publication as being in the high TC class. Ibiquo Superconductors By TL and HG-based high DC superconductors Technological applications could benefit from both the higher critical temperature being above the boiling point of liquid nitrogen and also the higher critical magnetic field at which superconductivity is destroyed. In magnet applications, the high critical magnetic field may prove more valuable than the high TC itself. Some cuprates have an upper critical field of about 100 Tesla. However, Cuprate materials are brittle ceramics which are expensive to manufacture and not easily turned into wires or other useful shapes. Also, high temperature superconductors do not form large, continuous superconducting domains, but only clusters of microdomains within which superconductivity occurs. They are therefore unsuitable for applications requiring actual superconducted currents such as magnets for magnetic resonance spectrometers. Preparation of high DC superconductors Properties Cuprates Iron-based superconductors Hydrogen sulfide After two decades of intense experimental and theoretical research, with over 100,000 published papers on the subject, Several common features in the properties of high-temperature superconductors have been identified. As of 2011, no widely accepted theory explains their properties. Relative to conventional superconductors, such as elemental mercury or lead that are adequately explained by the BCS theory, cuprate superconductors remain distinctive. There also has been much debate as to high temperature superconductivity coexisting with magnetic ordering in YBCO, iron based superconductors, several Ruthena cuprates, and other exotic superconductors, and the search continues for other families of materials. HTS are type 2 superconductors, which allow magnetic fields to penetrate their interior in quantized units of flux meaning that much higher magnetic fields are required to suppress superconductivity. The layered structure also gives a directional dependence to the magnetic field response. Cuprate superconductors are generally considered to be quasi-two-dimensional materials with their superconducting properties determined by electrons moving within weakly coupled copper oxide layers. Neighboring layers containing ions such as lanthanum, barium, strontium, or other atoms act to stabilize the structure and dope electrons or holes onto the copper oxide layers. 
The undoped parent or mother compounds are mod insulators with long-range antiferromagnetic order at low enough temperature. Single-band models are generally considered to be sufficient to describe the electronic properties. The cuprate superconductors adopt a perovskite structure. The copper oxide planes are checkerboard lattices with squares of O2 ions with a Cu2 plus ion at the center of each square. The unit cell is rotated by 45 degrees from these squares. Chemical formulae of superconducting materials generally contain fractional numbers to describe the doping required for superconductivity. There are several families of cuprate superconductors and they can be categorized by the elements they contain and the number of adjacent copper oxide layers in each superconducting block. For example, YBCO and BSCO can alternatively be referred to as Y123 and BI2201 slash BI2212 slash BI2223 depending on the number of layers in each superconducting block. The superconducting transition temperature has been found to peak at an optimal doping value and an optimal number of layers in each superconducting block, typically N equals 3. Other materials sometimes referred to as high-temperature superconductors. Possible mechanisms for superconductivity in the cuprates are still the subject of considerable debate and further research. Certain aspects common to all materials have been identified. Similarities between the antiferromagnetic low-temperature state of the undoped materials and the superconducting state that emerges upon doping primarily the dx2y2 orbital state of the cu2 plus ions suggest that electron electron interactions are more significant than electron phonon interactions in cuprates making the superconductivity unconventional recent work on the fermi surface has shown that nesting occurs at four points in the antiferromagnetic brillouin zone where spin waves exist and that the superconducting energy gap is larger at these points the weak isotope effects observed for most cuprates contrast with conventional superconductors that are well described by BCS theory. Similarities and differences in the properties of hole-doped and electron-doped cuprates The electronic structure of superconducting cuprates is highly anisotropic. Therefore, the Fermi surface of HTSC is very close to the Fermi surface of the doped CuO2 plane and can be presented on the 2D reciprocal space of the CuO2 lattice. The typical Fermi surface within the first CuO2 Brillouin zone is sketched in Fig 1. It can be derived from the band structure calculations or measured by angle resolved photoemission spectroscopy. Fig 1 shows the Fermi surface of BSCO measured by Arpies. In a wide range of charge carrier concentration, in which the hole doped HTSC are superconducting, the Fermi surface is hole like. This results in an inherent in plane anisotropy of the electronic properties of HTSC. Iron-based superconductors contain layers of iron and a nictogen such as arsenic or phosphorus or a chalcogen. This is currently the family with the second highest critical temperature, behind the cuprates. Interest in their superconducting properties began in 2006 with the discovery of superconductivity in LAFPO at 4K and gained much greater attention in 2008 after the analogous material LAFES was found to superconduct at up to 43K under pressure. The highest critical temperatures in the iron-based superconductor family exist in thin films of FESE where a critical temperature in excess of 100 K was reported in 2014. Since the original discoveries several families of iron-based superconductors have emerged. Most undoped iron-based superconductors show a tetragonal orthorhombic structural phase transition followed at lower temperature by magnetic ordering, similar to the cuprate superconductors. However, 
they are poor metals rather than mod insulators and have five bands at the Fermi surface rather than one. The phase diagram emerging as the iron arsenide layers are doped is remarkably similar, with the superconducting phase close to or overlapping the magnetic phase. Strong evidence that the TC value varies with the as FE as bond angles has already emerged and shows that the optimal TC value is obtained with undistorted phi as 4 tetrahedra. The symmetry of the pairing wave function is still widely debated, but an extended S wave scenario is currently favored. At pressures above 90 GPA, hydrogen sulfide becomes a metallic conductor of electricity. When cooled below a critical temperature this high pressure phase exhibits superconductivity. The critical temperature increases with pressure, ranging from 23 K at 100 GPA to 150 K at 200 GPA. If hydrogen sulfide is pressurized at higher temperatures, then cooled, the critical temperature reaches 203 K. The highest accepted superconducting critical temperature as of 2015. It has been predicted that by substituting a small part of sulfur with phosphorus and using even higher pressures it may be possible to raise the critical temperature to above 0 degrees Celsius and achieve room temperature superconductivity. Metallic Hydrogen Magnesium diboride is occasionally referred to as a high-temperature superconductor because its TC value of 39K is above that historically expected for BCS superconductors. However, it is more generally regarded as the highest TC conventional superconductor, the increased TC resulting from two separate bands being present at the Fermi level. Full-ride superconductors where alkali metal atoms are intercalated into C60 molecules show superconductivity at temperatures of up to 38 K for CS3 C60. Magnetic Properties Some organic superconductors and heavy fermion compounds are considered to be high-temperature superconductors because of their high Tc values relative to their Fermi energy despite the TC values being lower than for many conventional superconductors. This description may relate better to common aspects of the superconducting mechanism than the superconducting properties. Theoretical work by Neil Ashcroft in 1968 predicted that solid metallic hydrogen at extremely high pressure should become superconducting at approximately room temperature because of its extremely high speed of sound and expected strong coupling between the conduction electrons and the lattice vibrations. As of 2016 this prediction is yet to be experimentally verified. Ongoing Research Possible Mechanism Junction Experiment Supporting the D-Symmetry All known high TC superconductors are type II superconductors. In contrast to type I superconductors, which expel all magnetic fields due to the Meissner effect, type II superconductors allow magnetic fields to penetrate their interior in quantized units of flux creating holes or tubes of normal metallic regions in the superconducting bulk called vortices. Consequently, high TC superconductors can sustain much higher magnetic fields. The question of how superconductivity arises in high temperature superconductors is one of the major unsolved problems of theoretical condensed matter physics. The mechanism that causes the electrons in these crystals to form pairs is not known. Despite intensive research and many promising leads, an explanation has so far eluded scientists. One reason for this is that the materials in question are generally very complex, multi-layered crystals, making theoretical modeling difficult. Improving the quality and variety of samples also gives rise to considerable research, both with the aim of improved characterization of the physical properties of existing compounds, 
and synthesizing new materials, often with the hope of increasing TC. Technological research focuses on making HTS materials in sufficient quantities to make their use economically viable and optimizing their properties in relation to applications. There have been two representative theories for high temperature or unconventional superconductivity. Firstly, weak coupling theory suggests superconductivity emerges from antiferromagnetic spin fluctuations in a doped system. According to this theory, the pairing wave function of the cuprate HTS should have a dx2 y2 symmetry. Thus, Determining whether the pairing wave function has D-wave symmetry is essential to test the spin fluctuation mechanism. That is, if the HTS order parameter does not have D-wave symmetry, then a pairing mechanism related to spin fluctuations can be ruled out. Secondly, there was the interlayer coupling model according to which a layered structure consisting of BCS-type superconductors can enhance the superconductivity by itself. By introducing an additional tunneling interaction between each layer, this model successfully explained the anisotropic symmetry of the order parameter as well as the emergence of the HTS. Thus, in order to solve this unsettled problem, there have been numerous experiments such as photoemission spectroscopy, NMR, specific heat measurements, etc. Up to date the results were ambiguous, some reports supported the D-symmetry for the HTS whereas others supported the S-symmetry. This muddy situation possibly originated from the indirect nature of the experimental evidence, as well as experimental issues such as sample quality, impurity scattering, twinning, etc. An experiment based on flux quantization of a three-grain ring of YBA2CU307 was proposed to test the symmetry of the order parameter in the HTS. The symmetry of the order parameter could best be probed at the junction interface as the Cooper pairs tunnel across a Josephson junction or weak link. It was expected that a half-integer flux, that is, a spontaneous magnetization could only occur for a junction of D-symmetry superconductors. But, even if the junction experiment is the strongest method to determine the symmetry of the HTS order parameter, the results have been ambiguous. J. R. Kirtley and C. C. Tsui thought that the ambiguous results came from the defects inside the HTS, so that they designed an experiment where both clean limit and dirty limit were considered simultaneously. In the experiment, the spontaneous magnetization was clearly observed in YBCO, which supported the D-symmetry of the order parameter in YBCO. But, since YBCO is orthorhombic, it might inherently have an admixture of S-symmetry. So, by tuning their technique further, they found that there was an admixture of S-symmetry in YBCO within about 3%. Also, they found that there was a pure DX2Y2 order parameter symmetry in the tetragonal TL2BA2CU06. Despite all these years, the mechanism of high TC superconductivity is still highly controversial, mostly due to the lack of exact theoretical computations on such strongly interacting electron systems. However, most rigorous theoretical calculations, including phenomenological and diagrammatic approaches, converge on magnetic fluctuations as the pairing mechanism for these systems. The qualitative explanation is as follows. In a superconductor, the flow of electrons cannot be resolved into individual electrons, but instead consists of many pairs of bound electrons, called Cooper pairs. In conventional superconductors, these pairs are formed when an electron moving through the material distorts the surrounding crystal lattice which in turn attracts another electron and forms a bound pair. 
This is sometimes called the water bed effect. Each Cooper pair requires a certain minimum energy to be displaced, and if the thermal fluctuations in the crystal lattice are smaller than this energy the pair can flow without dissipating energy. This ability of the electrons to flow without resistance leads to superconductivity. In a high TC superconductor, the mechanism is extremely similar to a conventional superconductor, except, in this case, phonons virtually play no role and their role is replaced by spin density waves. Just as all known conventional superconductors are strong phonon systems, all known high TC superconductors are strong spin density wave systems, within close vicinity of a magnetic transition to, for example, an antiferromagnet. When an electron moves in a high TC superconductor, its spin creates a spin density wave around it. This spin density wave in turn causes a nearby electron to fall into the spin depression created by the first electron. Hence, again, a Cooper pair is formed. When the system temperature is lowered, more spin density waves and Cooper pairs are created, eventually leading to superconductivity. Note that in high TC systems, as these systems are magnetic systems due to the Coulomb interaction, there is a strong Coulomb repulsion between electrons. This Coulomb repulsion prevents pairing of the Cooper pairs on the same lattice site. The pairing of the electrons occur at near-neighbor lattice sites as a result. This is the so-called D-wave pairing, where the pairing state has a node at the origin. Examples of high TC cuprate superconductors include LA 1.85 BA 0.15 CuO4, and YBCO, which is famous as the first material to achieve superconductivity above the boiling point of liquid nitrogen. Qualitative explanation of the spin fluctuation mechanism Examples <laughs>